Hi. Okay, so I want to talk about the dinner recipe now. And I just want to show you and read out what I have, um, what I've kind of put together for the dinner. So the dinner is mostly carnivore. So um, we're going to be doing two ounces of liver. So you can do any liver you want. This is a package of beef liver. And you just want to weigh it on a scale. Just get a scale and do two ounces. Cut it off um, before you cook it. So two ounces of any kind of liver you can use um, you can use for many animals so you want to try to stay with a ruminant but you can do the chicken as well if you want because chicken livers are really good um, so bison or lamb or chicken or whatever you can do heart um, liver tongue kidneys whatever you have access to It'd be great if you had access to brains we don't but anyway um, so that's what you want to do two ounces of that then four ounces of whatever uh, meat you have so this is just a bison roast that i took out of the freezer um it's going to go in the instant pot right now actually i have a lamb in the instant pot so again you can do bison beef lamb um, occasionally you could do chicken and uh, although the red meats are going to be higher in nutrients for you so you want to do four ounces of that and then you're going to do another two ounces of a seafood and you can do um, salmon, wild sockeye salmon. You can crack open a can of sardines um, if you're in a hurry. You can do shellfish. This happens to be what I'm cooking tonight, uh, clams. So you can get oysters and clams that are live that are already deshelled to make it quick. And or um, you can do sea scallops, shrimp, so any kind of like a, a shellfish or I would keep it to probably haddock, salmon, sardines, things like that um, for your fish. And again, you wanna do two ounces of that. So two ounces of the organ meat, four ounces of your main meat, two ounces of your uh, fish or shellfish. And so now we have, um, in total, we've got um, eight ounces. So that's like having an eight ounce steak. Now, if you feel hungrier, then have more of your main. You can have more of your main for sure. You can take it up to six, eight ounces, whatever you feel like you can handle for calories and fullness. Um, to that, we're going to add a large egg yolk. So we're going to, I soft boil mine and then I crack them open and I sprinkle or I just drizzle all that runny yolk on top of one of the meats. Um, and that's just one, one pastured egg yolk. Uh, tallow, so I do one um, large tablespoon of tallow melted. Um, I guess you could do butter if you wanted to or ghee, but I do tallow. And um, I'm gonna do some Celtic or Himalayan pink salt to taste over top of the meat. Um, as well as I'm going to do seaweed, so I'm gonna do um, two tablespoons of like seaweed flakes, any kind of, you could use dulse, uh, you could use kelp, whatever you have access to, and sprinkle that up uh, along the plate. Sometimes if you don't like it, just put it over your seafood or on the side, you can eat it, whatever. That's fine because it's super uh, nutrient dense and we wanna make sure that we're getting all of our iodine or selenium, it also has a lot of potassium in it, things like that. So um, the other thing that we are going to do is if you want to just sprinkle some herbs on your meat as well um, you can go ahead and sprinkle herbs so an Italian mix uh, would be great because it's um, autoimmune we don't want to include nightshade spices but you could go ahead with that um, and the last thing or the last two things are um, and mine are coming mine have just been ordered so they are going to be arriving soon but cod livers in their own oil i'm going to do one tablespoon of a, the actual cod liver because i was going to include cod liver oil and if you don't have access to the cod livers which you can now buy on amazon even if you're in canada because of whole foods merger anyway um then you want to go ahead and have cod liver oil a tablespoon so i'm going to do a tablespoon of cod livers on my plate and a tablespoon of um wild salmon roe on top as well. So we've got the cod liver, we've got the roe, we've got the animal organ, like the beef liver, uh, we've got the main meat, whatever kind of main meat you're doing, 
got the seafood or shellfish and uh, we have got sea seaweed, tallow, um, just herbs and sea salt. And so that's it, that's it for the dinner. And that's gonna round out the rest of everything that you need. So again, you can see that these two meals are very, very, very nutrient dense. They're focusing on high quality organic and pasture raised animals. And then we're using um, some fruits and vegetable juices and a little bit of healthy um, plant fats to round out the micronutrients and to get us everything we want. So if you were to do this menu the way I've laid it out, it would be 1,750 calories. So that's a really good um, calorie count. And you can increase that and you can just add more meat to your dinner. As per if you want to get up to 2,000 calories, that's great. Um, you are fasting in the morning, so you're not eating till noon. And you're stopping at 6 o'clock and fasting the rest um, until the next day. If you still find it's too much calories for you to get in at 17.50, you could uh, consider fasting one day a week, uh, full fast. Um, the other thing to note here is I've, for the smoothie, I've contacted the, the makers of the organic brand of um, pumpkin seeds and sesame seeds and sunflower seeds that I'll be using because I believe that there is a lot of B1 um, in some of these and they're not showing on the packages. Um, so like I said, it's really hard to t um, tell and, and I just wanna make sure, I think I will be hitting B1, all of it, but if not, it's only showing on chronometer at about 54%. So I will need at this point to supplement with B1 or add a handful of macadamia nuts, but that will be about 500 calories if you do a half a cup of those. Um, that would get me almost all my B1. A cup of them would be a thousand calories and it would get me all my B1. But I do believe there's a bunch of B1 in the seeds that are not recorded because by law, I don't know about the United States, but in Canada, they're only um, required to put vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron. So, and then like the fibers and sugars and all that. But as for the micronutrients, they're only required to put those. So a lot of times, even if there is, I mean, they will add other ones if that's what they're known for and they want to promote that but if no one's thinking that anyone cares about B1 they may not put it on the package even though there's B1 in it so I have to look into that um, potassium I'm a little bit low in and again I think they're not recording it on the seaweed um, and I'm gonna be looking into that um, if not I might increase uh, the fennel juice in my smoothie uh, another ounce to three ounces instead of two um, and then everything else is hit. So you, like this is amazing because as you know, um, even calcium is 100% on this diet. As you know, if you've done a paleo or a carnivore or a keto diet, it's very, very hard to get. Calcium, it's very hard to get. Um, potassium is very hard to get. All your magnesium, it's very hard to get. Um, a lot of different things. Um, folate. And all these are being met. So I feel really good about this. Um, the only question I have at this point is how am I going to introduce it? How's my body going to take to it? Um, is it going to accept some of the, the cultured um, products to give me a little bit of gut bacteria after doing carnivore? Is it going to react to all these foods? Am I going to have to cut them back out? I don't know yet, but this is what I feel like is ideal. Um, it will knock me out of ketosis but my ratios um, are still um, basically 50% fat and then it's split about 30 20 for protein and then carbohydrates but even saying that um, the carb the net carbs are um, 74 grams so it's not gonna keep me in ketosis but the fat content is super high it's about um, 100 grams and a fat just fat alone and uh, about 118 grams of protein but percentage wise it's more like 50 30 20 so um, it's a good meal plan it's giving you tons of fat it's giving you tons of protein it's giving you the carbs you need to hit all of these um, it might even be able to be paired back I'm gonna um, once I hear back from all the 
Food manufacturers that I contacted for the missing micronutrients, um, I will do a final analysis on my diet and let everyone know. But on paper, this is the diet that I'm gonna be doing. So it's basically a carnivore dinner and it's a animal-based protein smoothie um, with the rest of the micronutrients uh, through plant foods and um, possibly a B1 supplement and I'm not gonna have to do anything else because everything else is being met. So that's my plan going forward and it's only a matter of whether my body will accept it. I'm gonna try to give it 30 days to accept this, at least two weeks to try to introduce it fully and then we'll see where we go from there. But this is the hope and this is the plan that my body will accept this and then I will be able to stick to this exact meal plan every day. Um, I, I hope to do it indefinitely, but I like to give it a six month trial every day after I know if my body's going to accept it and see, um, see what happens after I'm getting everything and see if I feel even better on this diet or if I'm feeling worse. So that's the plan. Um, again, it's a really nutrient dense diet it is also going to give me a chance to fast and it's keeping my calories under 1800 at 1750 which is about where i think i need to be for myself um yeah and of course if i feel hungry i can always add more of the main beef um, at the dinner which will just increase the calories and increase the nutrients as well so um yeah, I hope this helps. I just wanted to give you a quick update on the dinner recipe. So now you know the lunch, uh, the dinner. The only other thing I haven't mentioned is that I wanna be taking um, one teaspoon of bentonite clay. I'm using Terramin, two in one, but a bentonite clay powder, which gives tons of minerals and that will round this out. It will also help to absorb any toxins as well in the body. But since I can't do it at breakfast because I don't wanna break that fast, um, I will probably do it, I haven't decided if I'll do it a half an hour before I have my smoothie or if I'll wait and do it uh, before bed. But, or if I'll do it in between the lunch and the dinner. I haven't quite figured that out yet, but I am going to be having one teaspoon of Terramin 2-in-1 bentonite clay as well. Hopefully if my body responds okay to that. So that's the plan. Um, if your smoothie doesn't taste super great, the other thing that you could do, you could add a drop of stevia or you could add um, fresh lemon juice to it, which will always just um, kind of increase the flavor to being more palatable. So those, those are the other two suggestions that I would make if you're not enjoying the smoothie the way it is. Okay, thanks, that's all I have for today.